Hey, it's Mike, and I'm back in the Ask a Peria Question series, and shoot. So roast levels is kind of like cooking levels, uh, and it's a, a bit arbitrary. You've got from light to dark, right? So you think of your steak. You got your rare to your well done, a medium in between, you got all phases of that. So with coffee, you got light, medium, and dark roast. Uh, but within those, sometimes we call it city and full city. And then there's French and Italian. You get all these different roast levels. And it's a little bit confusing. Uh, so in the simplest form, there's light, medium, and dark. What we actually do here is our roast. We have a machine that measures the color of it. And we can do that both whole bean and ground. So we can have a number and have an exact number. It's, it's kind of known in the industry as an Agtron number, a uh, color track number. But it's a, uh, think of a paint color, Pantone color. So it gives us an exact degree of roast. And we actually use those for duplicating to get our roast and the same thing to you and again and again. So humidity is funny for a coffee person. Uh, humidity obviously is moisture, right? You get moisture in the bean, it takes a little longer to get it, the roast going perhaps, but at the end, as it dissipates, it can kind of affect the taste not always in a positive way. So when we're buying coffee, we are checking the humidity or the moisture in the bean. And we typically want to be in that 10 to 12% window. We want it just right. So coffee is that we receive samples of that are outside of those windows. They have to really taste great for us to consider buying them. The concern is if it's got higher moisture, isn't just that it can be a challenge to roast. The bigger problem is that it's going to lose its quality and its flavor in a shorter period of time. It can also lead to, uh, you know, you got too much water in there, it can lead to mold or ferment or something bad. So we have to be very careful and watch that. The easiest way, we buy quality beans, we check everything, we actually have meters that measure the density, that measure the moisture, that measure the water activity in that coffee, and we monitor that and measure that so we're buying coffee that's good. But if you happen to get outside of that, check it often and uh, add a little more heat in the beginning, it's a little slower at the end. So types of coffee beans, uh, we call them varieties. So there's different varieties. Everybody's obviously heard of Arabic and Robusta. And Robusta is considered bad, although in, uh, in Europe and, and Italy, they're known to add that purposely to get some, some body to it. The problem is it sometimes tastes nasty and dirty and I'm, I'm not really a huge fan of Robusta, but I've had a few that, are, that haven't been bad. So try to keep an open mind. That said, here at Clatch, we only carry Arabica beans. But just because some Arabica is like getting a, uh, going to a steakhouse and, and get one that's 100% beef, definitely doesn't mean it's good. So you want to get better quality and there's different types of, of, of meats, for example. It's the same thing with different types or varieties of Arabica coffee. So within Arabica you've got actually hundreds and thousands of different varieties. Uh, some of the, the more common one known are Bourbon or Catoye. Uh, there's one called Geisha you may have heard of because we had a lot of wonderful fruity and, and uh, floral and jasmine and, and sugar cane and tea flavors that kind of come to that. It doesn't even always taste like coffee, just wonderful. So there's tons of different varieties, tons of different coffees, uh, and I, I think you just gotta find one you like and possibly look for that. Uh, another thing is to just find what you like and buy that. So within the coffee industry, there's a, a few terms. There's direct trade, there's fair trade, there's relationship coffee. Uh, years ago, coffee used to sell for a really low price, and it was so low that it was below what it cost the farmers to produce. It was better for them to let it rot than it was to pick it, because they couldn't get enough money for it. So a group of people and organization got together called Fair Trade, and their thing was to trade fairly with the farmer, to give him a fair price for his coffee. Now that price back then, coffee was trading for like 50 cents a pound, so the, the fair trade price was around $1.25, uh, not very much. Now, of course, that's to the farmer in another country, and it's a lot of cost before it gets to us, before it gets to the consumer. But it was a fairly low number. The coffee market today is almost $3. It's almost triple. The fair trade price is still only $1.50. But in its best form, the nice thing about 
fair trade is if you're buying a coffee that's fair trade, you know the farmer, the producer was paid a fair price for his coffee. The unfortunate thing about fair trade is it has nothing to do with quality. So you're not always buying quality, you're just paying a fair price for it. Uh, that's where direct trade comes in. Uh, direct trade, we're dealing directly with the farmers, directly with the producers. We're, we're tasting and, and trying all that coffee. Fair trade, often to get certified, it used to be very hard, so it was somewhat limited to large farms or large cooperatives of, of farmers and producers. With direct trade, we can deal directly with smaller farmers who couldn't qualify uh, in the old days for, for fair trade, and we would buy direct for them. And we would buy direct trade based on the quality of the cup, and we'd pay them based on the quality of the cup. In other words, we wouldn't pay everybody who did the same job or had, you know, this certain amount of coffee the same price. We pay those that had a better quality, a higher price. Like when you go to a restaurant, you pay more for, or the supermarket, you pay more for better quality stuff. That's what we try to do. That said, we support both fair trade and direct trade, and we carry both types of coffee. Thank you for submitting your questions to Ask a Perry. If you have more, drop them in the comments. Send an email. Uh, love to talk more about coffee.